Hello, I'm Manuel and welcome to the TTC Vodcast series. In today's vodcast, we have Dr. Joma Joy. She is the head of Target and Assay Biology Group 1 here at EDDC, with over a decade of experience in drug discovery. Joma will take us through the key components of in vitro assays for target validation. Joma, welcome and thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having me here. Let's jump right in. What is target validation and the importance of in vitro assays? Target validation is the first step in the discovery of a new drug and this is a process which can take over six months or more. The aim here is to demonstrate the role of the identified target in a disease phenotype. Uh, in other words, to show a causal relationship between the target and the disease. In-depth target validation is highly important because we know sometimes in clinical trials the drugs fail and this could be due to lack of target uh, validation at the preclinical stage. Hence, target validation is the technical evaluation of whether a target has a key role in a disease, whether pharmacological modulation of the target will be uh, helpful in a defined patient population. So how does one measure the biological activity of the target and assess the effects of modulating function? Drug discovery is a process that goes through various key go and no-go decision points. We need to develop high-quality killer experiments and this is part of assay development process. Actually, this leads us to what is assay development. So the goal of assay development is to establish methods to measure the presence amount or activity of a substance and some of the important activities that we would carry out is to compare the catalytic activity of an enzyme in normal versus diseased tissues uh, we would quantify the cellular levels of a particular protein measure the metabolite in serum and plasma these are some of the important activities that are part of the assay development process you mentioned the importance of assay development what are the different assay formats that are used to, to support compound screening? The choice of assay depends on the biological function of the target molecule. In general, we can differentiate assays as uh, biochemical assays and cellular assays. In a biochemical assay, we would measure the function of the target and this could be a purified protein that is a recombinant protein or something that has been isolated from a cell lysate. We would then analyze the effect of the compound on this target and for this we have various readouts. This could be either in um, a luminescence readout or absorbance or fluorescence based assays. We can run these assays in real time as well as an endpoint assay. Now cellular assays are uh, physiological assays but they are much more complex. Um, so here we can simultaneously measure the effect of the drug molecule on the target but also look at off-target effects. Uh, we can also measure the permeability of the compound as well as toxicity. So in a drug discovery flowchart we would arrange these assays which are the less complex ones that is the biochemical assay first and then follow it with a cellular assay. What are the key aspects to be considered for assay development? To ensure a successful assay development, there are few parameters that one could follow. Firstly, what is the target molecule to be assayed? Is this the total protein or a modified protein from a cell lysate? Is it an isoform or a splice variant of the protein? Secondly, what is the parameter to assay? In terms of when we are talking about protein or enzymes, are we looking at the total amount of the protein or a post-translational modification of the protein because if we need to develop assays for gene expression and for analyzing the biological function of the enzyme these are two different sets of assays they generate complementary information about the molecule of interest thirdly one could look at uh, the source of the target because source of the target can be determined by the sample availability and 
the quantity of the sample. There are instances where when you purify the target molecule, it is prone to proteolysis or loss of post-translational modification. So in this case, we have to ensure we have better sample preps in place. Finally, when we are running the assays, we need to ensure that these assays can cater for hundreds or thousands of assay points. So to do that, we need to simplify the assays, streamline and automate the process. So these are some of the uh, parameters that one would look into. I often hear people mentioning sensitivity versus specificity of an assay. Can you explain the difference? Specificity is an important parameter in an assay. Um, when we are referring to antibody-based assays, we need to ensure that the antibody is specific to the target protein and it does not cross-react with other proteins. Hence, we have to characterize the assay components so that it identifies the product molecule and not the substrates or the precursors. Now, sensitivity of an assay is determined by the sample availability and quantity. And in this case, we have to ensure that the assay is sufficiently sensitive to detect small changes in the reaction. And that's why the dynamic range of the assay is highly important. When we talk about dynamic range, we are trying to look at a range over which the assay readout is proportional to the amount of protein molecule in the sample that is being analyzed. There are few other parameters that one would look into. These include interference, uh, for example, this would come from the assay components, um, especially if we are working with uh, coupling enzymes in an assay, we need to ensure that our inhibitor inhibits the target and not the coupling enzymes. Similarly, if we have fluorescence-based assays, we need to ensure that the sample is not being quenched. Similarly, um, we have other important parameters like robustness of the assay and reproducibility. Robustness of the assay refers to the assay that can cope with small changes and this should not be altered because of an operator or a equipment or sample preps. The other parameter is reproducibility of the assay. Here we are looking at small changes in the assay um, between inter and intra and this can be analyzed if we run a positive control in every assay. Finally, the accuracy is important and this is accurately measured um, for understanding the amount or concentration of the molecule. After we go through all these parameters, we have to document our assay results and prepare a method. What is the importance of biophysical assays? Biophysical assays are used to analyze the affinity of our molecules to the target and these are run using either SPR or ITC. In this case, we can understand the kinetics of the binding mode of action as well as molecular structures and interactions. Biophysical methods are used extensively uh, for fragment-based screening where we are using this for hit finding. More importantly, biophysical assays are routinely used in our hit validation studies. This was very informative. Choma, thanks again for taking the time. Thank you for having me and I'm happy to contribute to the series.